Good adventures, everybody. I'm Melissa Ponzak, and welcome to episode 108 of Books Cubed, the show where I chat with authors you should be reading. This week, I've got a great treat for you. Kitty Julik and I are discussing our favorite books of 2021. So we discuss paperback, uh, hardcover, audio, and of course, Vela. And Kitty had a little bit of mishaps with her, um, with her audio, not audio, her video. Well, I did lose her for a second with audio, but she had some video issues and I shouldn't laugh, but she was a great sport about it. And we had a blast. So let's get right to it. And I will see you after. You want to go first or should I go first? Um, I think it's hard, but I could, I could go first. Okay. 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 Um, so. <laughs> I'm going to give you my, my picks out of my 80 follows right now. I'm actually on top of 80 different fellas. There is an additional curated list on top of that, that I'm plugging my way through, but I'm on my 19th, almost 20th set of tokens. So it's like 3.4 million words ish is where I'm at right now. Um, wow. That so, is a lot of words. And for, for people who don't know how much you get per token bundle, can you just run through the bundles? Oh, oh, I don't know off the top of my head. I know that I spend twelve ninety nine or fourteen ninety nine for seventeen hundred. So I okay. get the maxed out bundle and I buy it online because if you do it through the Kindle app for iOS, the most you can buy is like nine hundred, nine hundred or eleven hundred. And it's and it's not comparable because Apple's also gonna take a cut. So I always buy it through the website. I'm bad like that. <laughs> well, it's okay. No, yeah, I do too. And I, I remind people don't buy on the app because you will get a lot more. Uh, okay, okay, so we're going to run down, like like I, I'm going to say in the beginning here, mm -hmm. just in case I forget though, we're going to run down our favorite books from 2021. Yeah. Is that right? We're in 2022 yeah. now? Yeah, 2022 today. Ugh. Um, and then my favorite list, my favorite list is actually like 50. So these are no particular order. Of the of the top twelve ish or so that I'm like had to share, um, my first one is the selfie of Cal Ivory by Mae McCollum. Um, if you're a fan of Oscar Wilde's Portrait of Dorian Gray, which was actually initially published as a serial, I learned that doing my research today. He was in Lippincott's Monthly Magazine. Then you're going to love Selfie of Cal Ivory, and um, basically it features a Instagram influencer who is an interior designer who unwittingly uploads her selfie and sells her soul on the internet um right exactly like this is this is like portrait of dorian gray but like it gets it gets better so real quick here's your blurb when Kala's friends tell her about a website that asks users to upload a selfie in exchange for everlasting youth Kala submits a selfie thinking it's a joke but when the wannabe influencers posts began to go viral her follower count skyrockets and she starts to get everything she's ever wanted. Kala soon finds out that the website is serious business, but everything has a price. And she even goes on to say, this is a modern reinterpretation of the portrait of Dorian Gray. So May's work falls into ca the categories of paranormal and mystery. Definitely a horror piece if Amazon actually ever gets us that category for Kindle Bella. Um, and one of the things I want to make sure people know is that internet horror is this new nebulous thing. One of my own works falls in the internet horror route. So I like things that involve modern day technology because we're so used to using it. We never really think about what's going on on the other end. Um, May also has three additional bellas, which include the Red Ship Tavern is Cursed, Monsters You Meet on the Internet, and We Came Here to Die. Um, my understanding is we came here to die is coming down soon because she's working on a novel adaptation uh, but hopefully we'll also see more coming in the cal ivory selfie universe in the future but that's just here safer now ah uh, nice i like that and they all do all of them deal with technology um i know that the monsters you meet on the internet and we came here to die do and um, we came here to die is basically a escape a haunted house that you can't escape and it's streamed on the internet. So oh. there's a lot of really good bits. May's amazing. I love her as a person and I'm, I'm really excited to see what she does next. That's nice. What, what is the, um, the, the word count for typical episodes? 
Oh my goodness! I and I'm, I'm sorry I should have asked you that before. Oh, do, okay. do they run shorter or longer? They run Because sometimes short. people have ones that are like 31 credits. So I can't read that yeah. much, not so in one sitting. I, when I got started, um, my my initial philosophy, which was probably backwards as a as a serial writer, is give them as much bang as I can in those early episodes, so that they get to know me as an author. So my initial early episodes are going to be a little bit higher count. But I know this one particularly was a daily in November. And then again, the second season was a daily in December. So her work count, I would know off the top of my head, runs between six and 900 words. I think there was only one episode over a thousand. Nice. And those are my favorite ones because I can read in the morning while I'm making breakfast and making my tea. And then as I'm walking through the house, I can read an episode real quick. So those are, <laughs> those are my favorite to follow. Or if you're waiting groceries curbside, you can get like through two episodes. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all right so tell me about your first book okay me okay yeah. so i am actually going to start with things for authors a few are i mean most writers mm -hmm. not most but i mean almost all writers authors are uh, how do i want to say this anyway some writers are readers also anyway <laughs> It's been a long day of writing. So these are three books that if you're a writer, these are three that you need in your toolkit and that you should look at. Uh, the first one, and I know some of you have already heard of them and some of you haven't, and I'm surprised all the time when people haven't heard of these books. The first one is the second edition of Newsletter Ninja, which comes out on January 26th. You can pre-order right now for $4.99. It's by Tammy Lebrecht. If you do not have a newsletter, what are you doing? You need to have a newsletter because those people are going to be the ones who buy your books. Yep. They're going to be the ones who want to buy your next book. They want to, they're going to pre-order. They're going to tell their friends about your books. They're going to be your biggest fans. And uh, the, her first book was kind of out of date. A lot of stuff had changed. And she's been talking for a while about getting a second edition out. And I was so pleased to see, and I've already <laughs> ordered my copy. And the stuff that she talks about for the newsletter, do it. She knows what she's talking about. It will increase your newsletter. It will increase your opens. Um, it's just good stuff. So uh, that is coming out, like I said, January 26th. I don't know if it's exclusive to Amazon or not. I forgot to look. Um, but I know it's on Amazon. Mm -hmm. Okay, so my next one is also a must. And that is 5,000 Words Per Hour by Chris Fox. And it is um, $2.99 for the ebook and $5.99 for the audio. I have it on audio and I listen to it a lot. Uh, he talks about um, creative, uh, how to create writing habits, and he talks about um, audio uh, uh, dictation. I know I wanted to say that somehow. And because I have issues with my hand, my giant hands here, um, mm -hmm. I dictate because uh, I have autoimmune disease, and they're not sure exactly which one. I have Hashimoto's, but it might be something else too. So my hand is all crippled, and I can't write, and I'm. It's just, it's a pain. I write anyway with is it. amazing. I oh. actually follow HK Darkwood and she's dictating translations of her first series, but she wrote that first series in Icelandic. So she has a smaller niche market because of the language. So she's been dictating. She, you can actually watch. So instead of writing, she's dictating and in her writing oh. sprints. And I'm like, this is so cool. So oh, yeah. I, yeah. I have, to, I think I have to give dictation a try. Um, my biggest thing right now is is productivity sprints to keep me going. Yeah, it's I, I like dictation just because, especially for dialogue. Uh, you know, you just start you just start talking, and I don't worry about tags or anything until I go back and edit, because then you really get into, especially if you get into a heated argument, your oh characters do, <laughs> and it just it just goes and it just it just goes out, mm -hmm. and it it I love dictation. So if you are reading Chris's book. He has um, things for you to do, lessons and things. Don't not do them. <laughs> do them. Stop do what them. you're doing and do the lessons because you are not going to get better at dictation or get better at writing a lot. Let's practice. Yep. It's, um, it's all writing every day. If you want to be a professional writer, you have to write. Well, you don't have to write every day, but you have to write as much as you can. Yeah. So, okay. So those two plus um, Fast Draft Your Memoir by Rachel Heron. And uh, it's Rachel, R-A-C-H-A-E-L, Heron, H-E-R-R-O-N. There's another Rachel Heron that wrote, it's a how to write a lot of words fast. I can't remember where, 20,000 words an hour. I don't know. 
I don't remember. Two thousand an hour. Oh my gosh. I don't know. <laughs> but there's another Rachel Heron. She just spells it different, or Erin, maybe she pronounces it. And she writes about how to write fast. And her book is good too, actually. Um, but uh, Rachel's Fast Draft, your memoir is really good for figuring out how to write your life story. Now, you may not want to, you may say, oh God, my, my life is so boring, but there may be aspects you want to write down. You could be a grandparent, you could be, yeah. I don't know, a parent, and you want to you want to uh, get these things down on paper. And actually, a lot of the stuff that she talked about works well for um, fiction as well. Mm -hmm. So I would recommend these three books for writers. And I, I forget what her price was. So, but it wasn't very expensive though. That's awesome. I've got to find a really good self-editing book to, to be like, Hey guys, you should try this one. <laughs> so I'm, I'm a developmental editor by trade and having something that I can be like as a go-to other than shrunk and white to be like, Hey, this is a great outline to follow before you start shopping for somebody to help you. It'll save you time and money. So I gotta, gotta dig into yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, there's so many things, not just spelling. And, mm -hmm. and you know, spell check is really important. <laughs> you want to make sure you run that through your document before you send it. You know, it's you, not just yeah. spell check. Mm. Yeah, so many yeah. things. <laughs> All right, I'm going to um, throw it to you for the next okay. one. Okay. Um, one of my mentions is Melissa Miggles and the Yuletide Witch by Azriel Lawless. Um, and I can go on and on and on about her, her top 250, which is Glint. Gindlina, there we go. I can I can say that out loud. Main character's name is Gindlina, and she's the good witch of the West. And I could go on for hours about it. But one of the reasons I'm actually gonna highlight Melissa Miggles is we have a very large underrepresented niche population of parents that are looking for appropriate child-aged material that are geared toward non-mainstream religions. And this was a fantastic story. Um basically. Um, just to give it, give you the blurb, Melissa Miggles, the Yuletide Witch. While the other witches work on their powers year-round, Melissa Miggles' witchy gifts only work 21 days a year. From December 1st to December 21st, Melissa Miggles, normally the most forgetful, scorned, and maligned witch around, turns into something else entirely, and it's all about bringing joy and security to children of the goddess in their two brief childhoods. While her work is all geared toward kids and, and pagan families, the stories are fantastic. Um, and the listen was just a very sweet, delivered, right when you needed it, holiday piece that made you feel good. And um, I had to, she's probably going to be sad that I didn't go on about Gindlina, but this was actually right now. I'm sorry, Asriel. This is my favorite one that she's got out. So I think that's why it's on my list. Oh, nice. That, is it contemporary or is it... it it's contemporary. Um, and I just, it's adorable. You know, you, we get, we get so caught up in the holidays and we get, we either are super into it or it's that's it's, or it's a time of year we struggle. Um, I personally struggle through the holidays. So having this pop up, um, it was kind of like the, the mental picture was like a walk through candy land <laughs> is what it felt like reading. It was like, it was one of those moments where you got a really good hug and you didn't have to worry about anything negative for a little bit. It's a really short read. It's only six episodes. So if you're somebody who's who's got a, who's into those kinds of stories and you haven't been on Kindle Belly yet, your 200 free tokens as a new reader on top of your three free episodes will definitely more than cover this one. Oh, nice. Is it something then that you can read to kids? Yes. All of her work under the name Azriel Lawless is geared toward children. So everything is, there's, and the best part is that she doesn't touch on themes that could potentially become inappropriate. Um, occasionally you run into something that is young adult and you're like, how is this a reverse harem story, young adult? The themes just don't seem to fit, but it happens. It's out there. Um, but it was really nice just to have something sweet that wasn't overly long for the holidays. I'm, I'm strange. I, I, I devour everything that I get my hands on. <laughs> Um, and unfortunately, and fortunately for everybody, my third pick is returning to the monster genre. I'm, I'm a horror writer. So it was really hard for me to order these out in a way that it wasn't like, I'm just like nailing into the horror stuff. Um, but my, my next pick is Chew by Naomi Alt. 
um, which is currently, it's in its third developmental season on Kindle Bella. Naomi's work also includes Alice Kane Must Die from the Discarded Objects of the Apocalypse, which is currently in its first season. So I can't begin to tell you how much I hate zombie stories. Um, I, I didn't like The Walking Dead. I didn't get into 28 Days and 28 Weeks Later. But for some reason, I just couldn't find a zombie story for me, which is awful because I like horror. Um, so like sushi, eventually, if you keep looking, you're going to find something that loves and draws you in. In my case, what you remain was Chu. And her blurb is fantastic. It starts out with, where were you when you were turned? And I got chills when I read this. Um, so the blurb goes on to say, the wormwood prion infected millions with an irresistible need to chew, demonstrating a distinct preference for human flesh. Allison Rose is lucky. She's one of the fortunate few to wake up in a recovery center cured, but with a head full of monstrous memories intact, teaming up with the enigmatic Ugh, enigmatic, I can say that word, I promise, Will Taylor, they discover the cure isn't the end of their nightmare, it's only the beginning. And the best overall everywhere, this one has the best opening line in any novella that I've read, and I've read a lot of them. And it, she, she starts with, remain calm. That's literally the first line, that's it. So remain you imagine, calm? Remain calm. Oh, imagine okay. waking up after going through an experience and you find out you ate your mother. Oh, geez. Could well, you could you imagine yeah. that kind of that kind of terror in your mind? Yeah. You were this this creature and suddenly you're back to normal again. And I am not, like I said, I'm not one for zombie stories. Just there's something about it that turned me off. But Naomi actually drew me in. She kept me in, which is really hard when it comes to this kind of, of topic. Um, I am looking forward to the rest of season three and I have a, on my website, I have, a, I have, there's two reviews for two, one for each season. I actually brought in a guest reviewer since zombies aren't my thing. Um, cause I, I want to make sure that I'm doing her justice, but it's definitely, it's actually a fun story. Don't sneeze. It's cedar season. <laughs> <laughs> Trying not to die in Texas. We have green snow. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, just the concept of post zombie apocalypse survival and being cured that I've never seen before. So this was brand new. It was fresh. And I'm so excited that there's going to be more. Oh, that sounds great. Cause yeah, they usually don't talk about the cure or yeah. if there's a cure, you know, it's like I, the Will Smith movie, I forget what it's yeah. called. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. We're, we're spoiler alert. Um, <laughs> if you haven't listened to it, don't, if you haven't watched it, don't listen. Um, the very end, you know, he may have the cure and then, mm -hmm. you know, everybody dies. Yeah. Um, I guess the lady and her, her kid got away. Yep. If you haven't watched it, oh my God, it's been about. out like 20 years. <laughs> what are you waiting oh, for? I yeah, I, I'm not a fan of, we, I remember when The Walking Dead started, we watched it on Halloween. I think it premiered on Halloween mm -hmm. and it terrified me. I don't like zombies. I like fantasy. Yeah. Um, I, mm, I, yeah, zombies are not one that, and I, I watch zombie movies. One of my favorites is Anna versus the Apocalypse. Yeah. It's a musical. Mm -hmm. It's so good. <laughs> so good. So if you haven't seen it, um, I think it's Anna versus the, the yeah. Apocalypse. Uh, that's a good one to see. But yeah, I avoid. I mean, I watched two or three, and I think then we finally decided it felt like it was going to turn into a soap opera. Uh, where he finds that his wife, you know, is shocking up with his ex-partner. I thought, I'm not watching a zombie soap opera. It's just, that, no, <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, can you know <clears throat> that just, that just brings horrible images to my mind of, of going to kiss somebody and then like their nose falls off or something horrible. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, now the one, of course, Shaun of the Dead was great. It's a of favorite course. zombie you movie, right but that's you. because it, they, you know, went with humor. Uh, and if you if you're watching, um, you need to actually watch. You can't like play on your iPhone while it's playing because so much of it is visual. Uh, with with Shaun of the Dead, I love Shaun of the Dead. You've got red on you. Yeah, well, her stuff sounds good. Now, when when um, when people when they do seasons, it, are they all on the same vela or are the each is each season on a separate vela? I think it depends on the author. Um, the hardest part, if you break your vela up by season into different velas, there's pros and cons. Pros, you get three new episodes and another chance to loop in 
hook in and loop in more readers and keep them as part of your readership. But the cons are you compete with yourself. Um, and that actually will lead into my my next pick. But I know that with Naomi, she's keeping everything in a single vela. Um, for me personally, while I want to offer the opportunity for, for readers to get those additional three free reads to potentially draw them back in if they're, I don't know if I want to keep reading or they're hemming and hawing over what they're going to do. It's really hard if you're doing well because you've got these two or three, maybe even four Vela's that end up competing with each other for, for getting space on that top 250 list. And speaking of that one, this is a great moment to talk to you about the Fox Argyle Mysteries by Collings McRae. Um, she, she's one of my favorite people in the world. And I reviewed her first season, The Ruin of the Watcher, back in my early days on Kindle and Coffee. Um, and you know, there are so many books and movies and comics where you have a token character and the entire thing who's neurodiverse and they're almost always seen as having a handicap. The truth is that there are not a lot of amazing examples of neurodiversity in media where they positively portray the character. Um, some good ones are Freddie Highmore's portrayal of Sean in The Good Doctor, Otto Essendo's portrayal of Isidore Latham in Chicago Med, and even Julia on Sesame Street. But like when it comes to those positive role models for people of all ages, there really aren't many out there. So knowing this and knowing where I fall in on the neurodiversity spectrum, it automatically draws me into this story. So Fox is diverse and he is successful and his behavior and actions are genuine and real to anyone who knows or loves someone that chases the, the faces the challenges of autism. So this isn't just what set McCray's work apart from other crime thrillers and mysteries. It puts her above because there's a sense of realism and she also, has this world within a world where she's pulling us out of our current post-pandemic, still in a pandemic life cycle and addresses real adult, is uh, adult issues. So she talks about things like menopause in the early episodes. I'm like, I wish I had more female heroes out there that talked openly about going through changes with their bodies because then I wouldn't feel so strange. And it was, it was kind of tongue in cheek and it was humorous. And then you've got Fox, her husband, who's like, I just don't understand because he's not one that's going to be able to but if you've got somebody who you love that's on the spectrum and needs a character that they need to look, look up to or if you need someone on the spectrum like you are that's different to look up to and um, fox argo in this detective series are amazing so the blurb because i like sharing these um on paper detective fox argo is a hero handsome wildly overeducated, eccentric adoring his wife with an epic passion when the strings are broken Children arrive on his doorsteps like offerings. Fox is forced to follow the breadcrumbs to a showdown with an old and dangerous enemy. The last time they met, Fox ran for his life. This time, it's not just his life on the line. It's the innocent children, it's his family. This time he can't run. Fox knows he can't, they can't live if he can't live if they die. So I adore this. So there's a chance that this is where, okay, this is where I use that word. So there's a chance when you get characters out of out of situations where they're not realistically responding, and that's a sar doodle dum. That's a spelling bee word, and it's actually is actually coined in the early 19th century, and um, by George Bernard Shaw. And it's mechanically contrived plot structure and stereotyped or unrealistic characterization in drama. It would be so easy for this to fall into unrealistic because you because mm -hmm. most people can't relate to characters in these kind of situations. But there's just a realism with her storytelling that keeps you coming back. I know that her third installment of this series is coming and they are listed on individual fellas. Luckily, she tags them Fox Thargal. So if you find her or follow the link later as a follow-up and you and you check out her stuff, if you click on Fox Thargal, it's going to show you the first two. And then when the new one comes out, it'll show you the third one. Well, the third one's out. It came out. I didn't see it. Yes, I, 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 th I think she's got it um, it's continuing on the second one. Now I have to go back and look at the second one again. Because I had the I've end been, of the second one. Because <laughs> I've been reading it and um, her writing just gets better with every episode. She's and fantastic. This last, this last uh, season or this, this latest story is just, just 
pulls me right in and I can't wait for new episodes to come out. And yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's just, just really good. This makes me wish that the Kindle updates were on all the devices and I actually have them on my Kindle itself because I get them on my phone. If I log in and open the Kindle app, sometimes they show up, sometimes they don't. I know it's in beta and they're working on it, but I would really love to be able to be on any of the any of my devices and get updates and know that they're there. And um, at this point, I literally, I have a bunch of tab, uh, tabs on my, on my browser <laughs> and I hit reload every morning and I'm like, is there a new episode here? Oh, it's yeah, silly, yeah. but you know, it keeps me on top of everybody that I'm following and I pay pretty close attention to the individual stories. Yeah, it's, I think I follow like 30 stories. <laughs> and yeah, and, and I'll get notices, you have updates in Kindle, Vela, it's like, which ones? Which ones? Oh my God, I have to go through each one to try to figure out. And, and, and sometimes it's say like you have updates and it won't show you any, or it'll yes. say you have updates and it'll show you 20 and you're like, what just happened? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I just go down the list every couple of days and see which one's new. Yep. I try to remember how many episodes are on it, but I can't mm -hmm. always remember. So <laughs> it doesn't always work. But yeah, calling stuff is, is she just gets better and better with every mystery. And this mystery, this is my favorite one so far. This new mystery, the case, the case of the reluctant whistleblower. Yep. Yeah, this is this is my favorite one by far. And uh, I've so liked them all, that? but I really oh. like this one. Yeah. See, now I feel horrible because I've been out of touch with social media. We we disappeared for a while and we went on vacation. So we were in a place where there, there was no internet. And if you stood on a picnic table and held your phone just so, you might get a signal out of Mexico. So <laughs> oh, dear. the best part about that was I was disengaged from social media. So it's been really hard to get back into it. So I've missed a lot of updates from people. So I've been I've been checking the Fox Argo tag instead of checking social media for the updates. Now I know if I go back and I look at the Vela, there'll be more there, which is exciting. It really, yeah. really exciting and makes me giddy. Yeah, I think there's um I want to say there's five or six episodes up. I missed five episodes. See, I think so. Okay, she sent on. me some. She sent me some to to pre-read before she before she put them up live, uh -huh. and. Um, so I've read ahead, <laughs> but, uh, but I want to say, yeah, I want to say there's like five or six. So <laughs> yeah, definitely, um, give yourself, uh, at least 30 minutes to, um, <laughs> get, get caught up on all the episodes. Yeah. Oh, see, now I'm just like, how did I miss this? It's because my app isn't updating and I've been watching for the new, for new posting. Okay. Sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Because <laughs> I know she's going to see this and she's going to be like, how could you not know? <laughs> not yeah, like, you know, you think it'd be easy, but I mean, how many, how many fellas do you follow? I have 73 on my follow list in the app on my personal account. I have another 60 something on my work account for reviews. So when I review, I, I'm out of the account that I read for fun on. So even if I've read something for fun. When mm -hmm. I'm working on a review, I reread on a separate account to make sure that I'm not missing anything and that I don't spoil stories. I'm horrible at spoilers. If you ask Naomi, I I, I, I will slip things. She's like, I don't like stuff to be spoiled. We were talking about Yellowstone today and I slipped something that was from a picture on, on set that I thought was for this season, but apparently is for next season. And I realized, oh yeah, I watched the finale. There's no more coming. It was definitely for next season. I was like, I'm so sorry. It's not like I'm doing it on purpose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would try to be careful not to not to um, do spoilers. My husband doesn't care. Like we'll watch, um, we like reality shows where they make things uh, like uh, Project Runway or Project the Runway. Top Chef, love Top Chef and the, and the great, The Amazing Race. So that started yesterday. Uh, but he will look ahead to see who won. It's like, no, why do you, why do you, what, don't do that. And obviously don't tell me. I want to but find you, out as it happens. <laughs> but if you do that with like Project Runway, it, it destroys the drama of it because of the, you oh. know, the way the with the way they interact with each other is just bonkers. Oh, and for Top Chef, he will look to see who won, and he'll also watch Last Chat's Kitchen to see who who. But they stop telling, you know, ahead of time. So, which is good. But he he's like, oh, I don't care about spoilers. I want to know. <laughs> no, don't. Don't tell uh, me. I don't want to know. Okay, let's move on. I will do 
my next one. Okay, this is okay. one that this is a genre that I never read. Well, I mean, I've read a few. Excuse me, I've read a few. Um, this is romance. I've read a few. I don't seek out romance on my own, though. I have to say, uh, I, I, I have nine books today, so my tenth one is an Italian Christmas, and oh my God, I cannot remember her name. I'm so, so darling. I'm so sorry. I love her so much, I and I've forgotten I'm, her name. I I, I'm exactly. so sorry. Oh, my God, I'm so sorry. Her exactly Italian Christmas, I loved this thing. I got friends to read it. I loved it. They were, um, it's it's limited. It was just for Christmas. It finished right around Christmas. Uh, there's like maybe 30 episodes, yep. 30, 33, something like that. What is her name? Darling. Darling's in her name. <laughs> I know one. I know exactly who you're talking about. I'm just going to call her Darling. <laughs> okay, here we go. It's Darling Davenport. <clears throat> Darling Davenport. See? I was right. She, she's, so, on my, she's actually on my list for the next time, even okay. though it's not the holidays anymore. I was like, yes. where is she? I know she's on my list. <laughs> yes, she's she is a must, must, must. A uh, lady ends up going to Italy. And there's this guy, and I don't know. It, it just the backdrop is not romance, and it's more work related. Exactly. And her her life, and I think that's why I either I either like romances where the male is the protagonist. Notting Hill is my one of my favorite movies yep. because it's not from a female perspective. Women sit around and they talk, and it's boring. Drives me I don't crazy. care. I, I Yes, they lose me as soon as they sit down and start talking. And I hate, I will not go see movies where several women are the, the lead. It's boring. My, my only Never watch Sex and the was, City. No, Blah. not Sex and the City. But my only exception to that is Fried Green Tomatoes. I'll toss that in. Yeah, out. I saw that one. My husband made me go, and I, I liked that one. But so, so people will recommend things, and I will read them. Okay. So anyway, it made me think of an Italian Christmas on Vela. So that's, yeah. one, that's my 10th one to read. Okay, so this <laughs> one is a traditionally traditionally published book it was a tiktok star and uh i had not planned on reading it but my friend said oh my friend Kristen said you have to read it you have to read it i've been reading it and it's just so good so it is called the love hypothesis by ali hazelwood and it is science backed the girl's a phd student and she uh she starts every chapter with hypothesis and then she'll say the hypothesis and then the chapter proves whether that's true or not <laughs> so that really my daughter's a chemist so i love anything that's, that's awesome. science related and uh, awesome. she yeah and you know there, there's a lot of things that happen it, it could be if you talk about the plot she pretends to be in love with this guy named adam her name is olive his name is adam she pretends to be in love with him so that her roommate will start dating the guy she used to date she doesn't want her roommate to feel bad and then adam needs the university to think that he's sticking around so he pretends she's his girlfriend so that they'll think he's sticking around so it's a very contrived plot and you, it's, there's a lot of well if they only just talk to each other but you got to remember when you are in love and in a relationship you are so unsure of yourself and you yeah. don't you you just can't just talk i mean people will say well just talk to him oh my god that's so hard to do so just send them a text. Yeah, that's all really. you have to do. Yeah, nowadays, a text. just send a text. And you're yeah. like, uh, -uh. But, nope. Yeah, but there's there's just so many things that um, that you know are not going to happen because you're going to be too afraid to talk to the person. Yeah. So there's some misunderstandings and this and that. And I have the audiobook, and I really love the audio reader. And uh, I was driving with my daughter and her husband going down to the Keys a few weeks ago, and. It's playing and chapter 16 is, there's some stuff that happens in 16 and thank goodness the audio was going directly into my ears. I wear cochlear implants so the sound was going directly into my ears and not in the car because I would have died of embarrassment if chapter 16 and part of 17 had played with them in the car with me. <laughs> there's a TikTok of a woman who went on a cleaning frenzy and had her audio book playing inside and it was that kind of content and then her husband came home and was like do you realize that's playing outside oh my god oh, <laughs> and, it had, and it had been playing for hours and i'm like and nobody knocked on the door and was like what's going on are you okay oh my god but How i, I end I up totally playing outside 
so she was on her home speaker system. I know like with us in our RV, we have zones. So we have our, our garage is zoned, our main living is zoned, and we have an outdoor. I can, and because of this, I know how easy it is just to hit the wrong button and have things play where they're not supposed to. Um, luckily, we haven't had that situation, but I just, I I totally get it. I'm, I'm not a big romance fan either, but I get sucked in. As long as the story is well told and it's not just catty women going back and forth because that, that that'll lose me and if there's a really good good side main plot so i should say the things i enjoy are more romance adjacent yeah 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 I, i'll be okay with that and and it was you know it, it wasn't her oh my god does he love me does he not love me blah 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 that really wasn't that i mean she did a little of that but it was mainly her and and she's trying to find a position to uh further her research she's doing cancer research mm -hmm. and it's just that i really liked the backstory i liked the characters um it's just it, it was fun it was fun and i see some i went i checked the reviews before i got it and there were some people that oh it's just the worst writing and blah 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 and i thought i liked it i liked it i, I thought it was fun Yep, I get that one. I have a, I, have, I run into issues. I try not to check reviews for authors' work anymore until after I've read something. Um, and I guess it's because as a reviewer, I don't want my opinion to be colored by somebody else's thoughts. Mm -hmm. um, and as a developmental editor, if, if somebody makes a big faux pas and it goes badly or it goes well anyway, I don't want to know beforehand. And a lot of times when you've got situations where there's bad reviews, those things come out in those reviews before you can get a chance to read. So I try to, I try not to. Yeah. Yeah. It's smart. And, and even for any book that I buy, uh, usually because it was a romance, I went to look mm -hmm. at it. Uh, but normally I look at the cover mm -hmm. and if that's intriguing, then I go and I look at the first, I look at the blurb and if I like that, mm -hmm. then I go and I read the first two chapters and, um, sometimes I'll just get the sample and read it later. And then when I get to the end of the sample, I'll just buy the book. Uh, but I rarely, when I'm getting ready to buy, I rarely look at reviews. I, I just really don't. Yeah. All right. I'm going to throw it back to you for the next one. Okay. My next one is in that horror genre again. Sorry, guys. It's what I write. So that's what I read. And um, this one is Briar Dark by S.A. Harian. So I need to preface this about Briar Dark with, I've said it before, but my husband and I live in an RV and we camp full time in the country. Um, normally we're in Bureau of Land Management lands, which dispersed camping areas that are heavily forested and down winding twisty roads. Like if you're a horror writer, these are the best places to kill somebody because you'll get eaten by a bear before the body's found. So if you've read Daniel Lewski's House of Leaves, um, Briar Dark is going to be a similar experience. So as an example with House of Leaves, the house is bigger on the inside than it is on the outside. Oh, the and TARDIS. It's, yeah, it's like mind bendy and scary. When I read it, I was working for the video game company that shall not be named. And there was a staircase that you had to climb up to get to where we worked. And it got to the point where I was so terrified of stairwells that I would walk around the buildings. We were on at the UC Irvine campus. You have to park behind. And I would walk around this building all the way to the front go into the main door and go up the elevator rather wow. than go up any of the stairs. So this is just going to give you an idea of how mind bendy twisty this is. So the, the blurb also doesn't do it justice, but it gives us a good place to start. So it starts out with a mind bending mystery, a fight for survival, a forest that defies the limits of reality. Dead switch wilderness is a researcher's dream and Sienna DuPont has finally has her chance to study the untamed backcountry. But when an uncharted path leads her team to a, the body of a hiker who has been missing for a decade and their trail home vanishes as if it never existed, what started as a research expedition morphs into a supernatural nightmare from which they can't escape. So to give you an idea, so we're out and we camp and I'm, I'm out on my campfire and I'm reading this Vela on my phone. And I'm, I'm like, this is like my third pass and she's got two new episodes out. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna read through it again and, and then get to the new episodes because she hadn't updated in a while. And my husband leans over and whispers in my ear, don't stray off the path. So oh, don't stray off the path, which is one of her catchphrases. And I freaked out when I ran. <laughs> like I dropped my phone and I ran. 
I, I will tell you that her writing is very immersive. There's also a little bit of internet horror involved in it and the way that she reveals the twists and the turns. But this, this story is amazing. And I can't, I'm like, why aren't some of my favorites doing better? And I'm like, okay, there's more readers coming. They will come. But this story is amazing. Um, everything on my list, of course, is going to be like, spend your tokens, do it, do it. But this this villa is absolutely phenomenal and every time she releases an episode i'm in a discord server with some of the other horror writers and i message her and i'm like you left it there why how could you do this to me she's like i'll update soon i promise and i'm like no i can't wait but it's just okay. like that's what i love about serial fiction is that i you have a chance to completely re-engage the reader it's not like a novel where if you have a misstep you don't have a chance to win your audience back like if you get to an end of an episode, you're like, eh, I don't know what was going on. It wasn't good or not. Maybe I'm not going to read. Nine out of 10 times, you're going to click the read next to find out if it's worth keeping going. And then you get re-engaged. So that's one yeah. of the reasons I love the serial fiction format so much. But yes, Fire Dark by Sarah Her by S.A. Harian totally will freak you out in ways that will drive you crazy. If you live in the woods, maybe read it with the lights on. Ooh, that sounds good. I like that kind of stuff. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, you have to be careful what you're reading. I was camping once and brought one of Stephen King's books with me. I forget which one. <laughs> I couldn't leave the tent. <laughs> I I totally get it. Like there there are nights where I'm like, dog needs to go out. Is the moon out? Are all my lights on? Nobody else is around. Okay, it's safe. But oh yeah, I grew up in the country and. Um, and we had a really long driveway and I it was my I was supposed to bring put the trash out whatever night it was supposed to go out and I never did it during daylight because I was a lazy kid and it would be dark and I would be freaked out and I have a very very active imagination I I saw um uh zombies I saw uh one of the night of the love of the living dead films at the theater and after we left the theater we went over to the elevator to go down and I, I was thinking about zombies and the door opened and there was somebody in there and I screamed because I thought she was a zombie. My mother was not happy. My mother took me to a zombie movie. I can't believe it. But anyway. <laughs> oh my goodness. But, but yeah, so uh, that one, I don't live in the city. I live kind of the city, kind of the edge of the city. So I'm excited about, I, I'm excited about reading all of them actually, but I'm going to start with that one. Yeah. Okay. Most definitely. My next three kind of run together. Uh, so oh, okay, I'm go ahead. I'll go through real quick. So before I even tell you the title, I have to preface this with, this author is one of my heroes. Um, they are a music genius, they're a composer. And the first time I actually encountered any work by this author, it was playing their music in a pit orchestra where I was subbing for a cellist on a baritone saxophone. Nightmare, <laughs> but it worked. <laughs> but. This is Club X, Vampire in the Closet by Samto, and I'm going to mess this up, even though I know how to pronounce it. It's Sukar, Sukaritko. He's a, he's a Thai, Thai, Thai native and has, was in the country for quite some time. So I already told you about the music. So my first experience with him was The Snow Dragon, um, which is one of his operas. Um, and then this is going to be horrible because I'm such a fangirl of his music. I didn't know he wrote horror. Right. So I was like, okay, so I'm, I'm writing and I'm about my, about my Vela on one of the promotion groups. And he commented <gasps> on my Vela. He and I, freaked out. I lost my stuff. Oh. Um, like I started calling people. I'm like, Oh my God. Oh my God. Like it was just one of those crazy moments. And then I found his Vela and I was like, wait, he's like the father of Thai horror. How did I not know this? He has this great wealth of horror behind him. So this one is Club X Vampire in the Closet. It's a coming of age young adult thriller featuring LGBTQ characters dealing with vampirism. The second season is coming, but the first has already been adapted into a novel. And from in my understanding from checking out his Patreon and talking to him a couple of times, which was awesome. I told, I, I, I geeked out. I had those, Oh my God, Oh my God moments. Um, it's being optioned into a web series. So this will be nice. on television eventually as far as I last heard. So I'm, I'm excited about this. Um, sometimes also a Ted talk presenter, his talk writing the lightning is one of the reasons I actually started writing again. You would think I would have 
been like, no wonder he's talking about this. <laughs> but I didn't because I'm a silly yeah. girl. Um, so he talks about this. This Ted talks about when and how to, to, to grasp on your ideas when you feel like you've been struck by lightning. So the blurb, um, world fantasy award winner, S.P. Somtow. First Kindle Bella series now online. St. Cecilia's boarding school is a hotbed of hormones, mystery, fantasy, and dark secrets. Five kids, three boys, a girl, and a boy girl uncover the dark secrets of their school amid mysteries of identity and sexual attraction. Vampires, dancing nuns, Club X solves every mystery. Season one's complete. Season two, Zombies in the Fridge is coming soon. That's a great title. <laughs> I I am so excited for this. And I'm like, I don't want to talk about it because I know I'm gonna I'm gonna spoil it. So I'm like, I have to tell you, if you are looking for a young adult story that's appropriate for young adults that address issues they face without being over the top or trying to tell you what to think or how to think, his writing is fantastic. Especially this fella. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah. I'm I'm always trying to pass along stuff to my nephews. Uh, so yeah, I may have to um, take a peek at that one, and uh, and send it along. Oh, okay, you have, you have more. I've got two more that that follow in this LGBTQ friendly sphere. Okay. Um, one is from new is the space slave from newcomer to Vela, Kayla Canoe. They have Project Infinity on Tapas, which was their first ever serial. It's still ongoing, and their first book series. Um, is the intertwined series with the reckoning, which is a, how do I put this without, without quoting it exactly. It is literally the hunger games meets beauty and the beast, but with more twists. <laughs> so it's, 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 it's amazing. Um, now there is a warning. This one does get steamy because the blur and you're going to get it from the blurb. Um, but this offers an insane, excuse me, sci-fi and intergalactic travel with the woes of modern human life. So the blurb is, my name is Colton Arthur Anderson. I was a simple Arthur teen who played video games with friends and secretly published boys love stories online. But when thugs from the black hole group broke into my house looking to collect a huge debt my drunk father owed, my life was forever changed. In order to save my mother from a life of prostitution, I agreed to sell my virginity on the intergalactic black market. It's dark, it's twisty, but it's fun. Um, it's brand new and it's ongoing. And I believe that Kayla is attempting to post three to five episodes every week. So it's a wow. new brand new, we're like on episode 18 now and they're short and sweet. So even if it's not something that's in your wheelhouse of something you would normally read, get something you might want to give a try to see what happens. Oh yeah. That sounds, yeah, that's <laughs> like, I... they just like. The inner, it's the nitty gritty and the sci-fi and the crazy yeah. and like, congratulations, all of a sudden aliens exist. I would have lost my stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, and then we have Under My Umbrella, a Mill Creek romance by Erica Heine, um, which is a sweet boys love story, um, which is coming of, of age romantic comedy. I laughed so hard with this one. Um, and if you if you read it, like you have a, a guy who has everything possibly go wrong that could possibly go wrong. Um, the blurb starts with, are you one of those gays? His mouth hung open slightly as he waited for my answer. Are you asking if I'm gay? Mm hmm He nodded slowly. Our eyes met and locked. I wasn't sure how to answer that. So this is a great self-discovery. It's a little steamy type of story that just, it's a feel good story with comedy. And I, I don't normally associate these kinds of coming of age stories with comedy, but Erica did fantastic with this one. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah. Well, you know, for a difficult subject, comedy is a good way to go. Yep. And then my last one in this group of, of craziness from, from those themes is if you're searching for a lesbian theme, that's a little steamy. My pick for you would be Gabby's Wig, which is part of Ellie Sandoval's Carnal Sanctuary Universe. Um, warning, it gets very steamy, but it features supernatural shifters of the unexpected kind. Her blurb is Orf Orphan Gabby has traveled from Astoria, Queens to Astoria, Oregon, on a quest to find herself. When she meets 
Ava and Dylan, her plans to explore all of the Goonies film locations are thrown aside and she finds herself at the threshold of a world filled with strip clubs, shifters, vampires, succubi, and other supernatural beings. The blonde's life will never be the same again. I normally don't get into that kind of reading, but in this situation, the unexpected types of shifters drew me in because I, I love rare werewolf stories to an extent, but the problem is there's just so many and they've gotten to the point where it's absolutely predictable. You know what's going to happen the second, you know, it's a werewolf story. But now you've got different types of shifters. I, I Later on, I'll tell you about the time when I questioned things and was like, why did there have to be spiders? This one is, why does there have to be snakes and crocodiles? <laughs> so it's a great, it's a great way to get into stories where there's different kind of shifting going on. Oh, I like that. I like. What was the name of the last one again? Um, this last one is Gabby's Way, and it's part of Ellie Sindoval's Carnal Sanctuary Universe. There are several novels in this universe already, and I think, if I remember correctly, from when we had book club, Ellie is thinking about additional Bellas to go into this universe as well. So there's a ton of material available. If you decide that this one is for you, it worked out, and you want to read more. Ah, nice. I like that. I like that. Yeah, a lot of the Vela authors have other books, you know, out there too. So uh, unfortunately, Vela still does not let you link your Vela's to your author page. I don't know no. why. I, I, I well, it's part, strategy. I think it's yeah, because they're still in beta, and if yeah. they link to your author page in regions where that's not available, I think they want to prevent people from being like, I want to. Oh, I can't. I can't. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I really wish that they would get um, Android users and then yeah. Canada and then um, start adding other English speaking countries. But the Kindle Unlimited release, they did the continental United States and then it was Canada, Great Britain, Australia, and I think New Zealand was the next chunk, but it took a good deal of time to get there. Um, I, if they're following the similar model, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw Canada, Great Britain, New Zealand, Australia, and maybe Mexico in the next round. Um, and the signs are there because they didn't start expanding regions before they started actually advertising toward potential readers. And we yeah. just saw in the past, I want to say four or five weeks where they're advertising in the U.S. towards mm -hmm. actual readers mm -hmm. and not just big billboards with no information and just a, a cover of a Vela. Um, but they're actually like reading, reading people is what they're geared toward now, not just the authors that are trying to get in and say, we need you to create content so we can release this feature. So I have an, I have a thought and based on the way it worked before, probably it'll probably be a full year, maybe a little less before it opens up into other regions. But I wouldn't be surprised if we start, start hearing whisperings of them getting ready to push their next region soon. I also don't anticipate them really pushing to other devices, which makes me sad until there's more regions available. And the, the worst part about this is me saying, I don't think they're gonna update the, kin the Kindle itself, like the, the physical devices until after it's a worldwide hard release. Oh and yeah. that's hard. Yeah. I, I think they're gonna wait on that too. And it makes me nuts because I have this great Kindle. I bought a brand new, it's got the big screen. It's the version 11. I'm, you know, it has the screen yep. that you can read in the sun. And got my I, paper it's... white, I love it. Okay. so. This is, these are ones that I have here. So this series is called Smoke and Magic and I've had, I've had Emmy on before. This is, uh, uh, the first one is called Bad Luck Genie. There's three of them out. It's Genie's, she doesn't have a lot of good luck. There's a love-hate relationship with a uh, FBI agent, the Fay Bureau of Investigation that she gets bonded with and she can't get away from. And it's, they're fun. Uh, like this one, this is book two. No one wrecks Lucy Avalon's pizza oven and gets away with it. My house was ransacked, my pizza oven destroyed, and my entire family is missing. On top of that, someone stole the Blarney Stone and the, the Ginny FBI thinks it's my mom. Sure, she's stolen stuff in the past. Yeah, she's on the top 10 most wanted list, but she left that life behind. She promised. Well, the Blarney so, Stone. Yeah, these the three books that she has out. She's working uh -huh. on book number four. It should be out sometime this next this next quarter. She said. Fantastic. They are so much fun. Uh, those are I highly recommend those. So let me see. Okay, Smoke and Magic. So the other, the next series that I'm going to quickly talk about here is the Steel Guardian series. It's wasted, wasted. I can talk. Ooh. Rusted Wasteland. 
by Cameron the cover Coral. Is beautiful. There are three books in the series. It's book one, Steel Guardians. Book two is Steel Defender. And book three is Steel Protector. So it's got this cleaner bot who works at this hotel. And then the, there's an AI uprising and all, a bunch of humans, most of the humans are killed. So this oh, no. cleaner bot, he finds this baby and he, there's a note of where to take the baby. And so he obeys and, you know, he's going to go take this baby and he runs into this human soldier named Nova and there's all this adventure and excitement. And it's not just, you know, robots. Eh, I don't always like robots, but something about this robot in the very beginning of the story and I don't want to give anything away something happens to prove his humanity he's just a robot but something happened that just devastated me and I actually put the book down for like three weeks I, I could not read it and then I picked it I said oh, I, I like block I gotta see what happened picked it back up and I, I'm still so sad about what happened but it showed me that block was going to be the one to get this baby and and protect it and the baby is either going to destroy humanity or be the savior we're just not quite sure so uh it is just it is a great if you like robots if you like uh post apoc and if you like ai and all that you are going to love her books and she has other stuff too but I'll, I'll i'll put a link to um her her page on there so that's still guardians and um let's see okay okay so there's a tv show called black sales I've, I saw a couple episodes a long time ago, and the, there's an actor on there named Luke Arnold. I don't know which one he is. <laughs> I don't remember what he looks like. But during during COVID, he got bored, and he wrote two books. Uh, one The first is Last Smile in Sunder City, and the sequel is Dead Man in a Ditch. This is a world where magic has disappeared, and it, it it's a detective story. And this detective is a former soldier, and he's a human, but he doesn't work for humans because they don't need his help. The former magic people need his help. And because magic was gone, all these things happen, you know, like um, uh, uh, creatures aged and and uh, uh, turned to wood, and there's just all these things that happen to magic. And they are so good, and it has a very noir feel to it. Uh, the narr he narrates it himself, and he does an excellent oh. job. And it's like, oh, yeah, you know he's an actor because he's very good at it. And he had said that he's busy with acting now, so he doesn't know if there'll be a book three. Hopefully there is. Uh, it was just, uh, I, I've, been, I've been on uh, several fantasy boards just recommending the hell out of this series. It just, it, the audio, I listened to the audio, both books. I had to drive from... Uh, Florida to Salem, Massachusetts, and then from Salem, Massachusetts to Wisconsin, and then Wisconsin back to Florida. Oh, that's a lot and driving. I had like a lot of hours. Yeah. And from from uh, Florida to Salem, then Salem to Wisconsin, I looked listened to each book. And I was so happy that they lasted as long as they did, and they were so good. And I saw, I was checking the books and saw there was an update on one of them, and I'm like, oh yeah, I will update and listen again just in case anything's changed, because the story was just so good. And there's not really romance. There's a hint of it and some unrequited love and things like that. Mm -hmm. But it, it just if you like magic and magical characters and it's just it's just so good. So, so good. I need so to that's put that, that on one. my and list because we listen when we drive too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that's that's uh, uh, traditionally published. It's audio Last Smile on Sunder City and Dead Man in a Ditch by Luke Arnold. Um, the next one is... A, a series I started a couple years ago, but I have the trilogy. There's five books in the series, but I have the first three on audio. I'm going to include it just because I loved this book. So the first one, it's called the Duck and Cover series, and it's by Benjamin. Oh my God, I did not write his name down. Um, well, I mean, I'll put it. I'll put it in the. Uh, I'll put it in the show notes. Sorry, Benjamin. So the first one is called Post Apocalyptic Nomadic Warriors. And I have never, <clears throat> until this book, never clicked on a Facebook ad before. His cover, which he has changed, I do not like the new covers. Hey. The original cover is still on the audiobook. You see the, the wasted city in the background, way in the distance. There's, a, there's an RV, and then there's a boot with the heel lifted up and gum stuck to the heel, <laughs> stuck to the ground. And I thought, that is amazing. That's an amazing cover. I love that. And I hate that he changed them. And now it's got people with like lines and stuff. And it's just, 
I hate the new covers. So don't let the new covers uh, sway you. This this yep. series is amazing. The narrator brings 100% more to the story. Do you ever listen to the old Honey Badger videos? This yep. is the Honey Badger, you know, he's a, yep. and so I thought it was him and I had to look it up and it's not him, but it sounds like him. <laughs> and I just, and I, 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 I talked about this book a couple of years ago and it, I, I can't even remember what the, I should have looked up the line, but it was something like, he didn't want to, but he did, but he shouldn't have, <laughs> but he did. Oh my God. Regrets it was were so, had and mistakes were made. <laughs> it's so funny. I absolutely love the series. Uh, it's on audio. I look for the uh, trilogy. I think mm -hmm. I, I think you froze. I think I froze too. I'm looking at my camera going, what happened? Where are you? I can still hear you. So that's good. Okay. <laughs> so then my, uh, my um, one that I have not finished, I have just started this one. I'm only at 15%. If we still have you? Yep, you still got me. I still bought you. Just can't see you. <laughs> okay, so this one is called Once Upon a River. It is a bestseller. It's by Diane Setterfield. It is. It feels like a. It is. It's a fairy tale. The narrator is this British aristocratic voice. This woman, and I love the narration and its beautiful language, and it makes me just want to lay down and close my eyes and listen. And I'm usually listening in the car, so that's not good. Mm -hmm. uh, but it just feels like a fairy tale. And there's this child that that uh, that is dead, but then comes back oh, no. to life. And and there's all these things. And I don't want to give too much away, and I don't know too much yet because I'm only 15%. But so far, the language is beautiful. The narrator is beautiful. It just it's just a beautiful fairy tale. So uh, that is one that I that I uh, recommend also. And we're gonna have all of these yes. all the links to all these books in the show notes. You can down there and click. Kitty also writes, so yeah. uh, and I do too. So we're going to include ours also because we can. Um, yeah. What's what's the title of your villa? I have two right now with a third coming. The third the third actually has a title reveal this coming week. The first one is the Explorers, which is internet horror basically. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the, explore, the exploration apps where it literally generates a point and it sends you to them uh, with no vetting. It's what happens when somebody decides they want to make one of those for nefarious purposes. And then the other one is a werewolf adjacent ish story where there is shifter true mates involved, but not in a way that people would anticipate. And what the heck happened to my camera? Hello camera. <laughs> now Can the words are upside down. <laughs> I'm if you're not happened? if you're if you're just listening there we I'm, go now she's upside down <laughs> i don't know what happened but i'm here yay I'm here to go oh, that's great <clears throat> that's great and then uh yeah and then so i'll put i'll put hers and um mine and i've talked about mine before amy verth is my fantasy she falls through a portal there's a shapeshifter named lennis who is androgynous and a kugel and a wine guzzling shrubbery who is in love with I her love that. and uh the, she's the being pursued she's being pursued by an ant-like soldier because she makes some she will make some comments i thought this would happen a little further and there's been more mm -hmm. development of the characters uh she makes some comments about things that are only found in science fiction tv shows so he thinks that she has all these um all these uh things that she doesn't so he's going to be pursuing her looking for those things and so that's that's the fantasy amy of earth and then i have um four bullets and a ghost which is a cozy paranormal uh jack you're dead doesn't mean we can't talk i thought it did so um yeah she her 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 partner is murdered comes back three days later and has her help him solve her case and then just the last one for the first case just went up um, a few days ago, so I need to actually start writing the next case. Oh my goodness! I'm upside down and frozen. I Is all the blood rushing to your head? <laughs> I'm She's like, a I'm vampire. A <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of vampires, in my in my last group of of crazies. Um, one of them, if I scroll down here to the bottom, is The Last Sunrise by Martin Shannon. And I was so excited. He got her crowned for the first time this week. And I was like, I was in tears. So I'm going to give you real quick. I'm going to fly through these last three. So oh, yeah. the, the blurb is blood and family are all that matters to Mallory Evers. 
that and avoiding the sun. When drug dealers turn her brother Mal and Nate get their tic- their tickets punched for a one-way trip to the other side. But something happens along the way, and they both come back different. Very different. Her newly acquired thirst for blood puts Mal on a mission to find men that did this to them, while keeping her rapidly devolving brother from turning into a one-man eating machine. If you like vampires who don't sparkle and are a different kind of vampire, this one is definitely for you. Um, Martin is fantastic. He does his own art. It just, the story is amazing. Um, and then oh, I like that. I have yeah. a, a for fun one. I don't know if you've ever seen the title and go, please let this be good. Please let this be good. It has to be good because if not, you're going to be devastated. Um, that is this one. And the title is Dinos of the Old West. It's by Jonathan Mast and Nathaniel J. Peters. Oh, I think, yeah, I think I did see that. Um, the, the blurb is Cowboys and Coronosaurs, Stetsons and Stegosaurus, Deputies and Dinosaurs. That's right, folks. What would make the Wild West wilder? Dinosaurs. Follow the Sheriff of Golconda as he deals with raptor gangs, triceratops thieves, and a galloping gallimamus or two. What? Welcome to the Wild, Wild, Wilder Wild West, co-created and co-written by Nathaniel J. Peters. And the best part about this, without revealing anything, is one of the top one of the topics it covers is how to milk a T-Rex. There's actually a we we played with like a stuffed dinosaur and a woody doll from from Toy Story. And I and a friend of mine's like, we should make a trailer for this one. I'm like, okay. And I'm like, in a world where dinosaurs rule the earth. And I have like, and I'm like, I've got a pterodactyl stuff. I'm like, Ha-ha! and at the end, and one must learn to milk a T-Rex. My best friend died. She's like, how do you milk a T-Rex? I was like, I don't know. I don't make this stuff up. <laughs> but yeah, Dinosaurs of the Old West. Fantastic. It's got a humor campy old spaghetti Western feel to it. And it sticks to that and it doesn't lose it from start to finish. I know that they're actually getting ready to wrap it up, which makes me sad because I love it. And then... My final pick, which makes me sad. Um, there are more, I promise. And I have to preface this, guys. There are so many of you that I follow and talk to on a daily basis. If I didn't put you on this list, it's not because I don't love you. It's that there's just so many on my list. So there will be more later. But this last one is Links by Sarah Ship, The Kingdom of Links by Sarah Shipley. It's a Just Kisses adventure, which is appropriate for all reader age groups. Now, the best thing about this is that when you think of shifters, you, you automatically go bears and werewolves. And, you know, we talked earlier and I was like, snakes, crocodiles. Well, this one made me go spiders. Why did it have to be spiders? Now, something I have to explain to you is the story had me laughing and crying to finish. But how many times when we dealt with Harry Potter, whether it was reading, listening or seeing the movies, did we want to crush Rita Skeeter under our heel and be like, gotcha. You know, I just, and I, and then, and then reading this, I was like, oh my God, that's so cool. <laughs> like it's talking about young shapeshifters. And one of the, one of the characters is a spider. And what if she turned into a spider and there were kids threatening to step on her the second she shifted. And I'm like, and I just realized how cruel was I to read a skeeter. She would have gotten her just desserts, but it just like, you, 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 it gives you a different perspective. But to give you the blurb, it was born into the lowest link of in, in the kingdom of shifters. Ashley's goal is simply to keep herself and her little brother alive. Unable to manage her shift until she's of age, she lives a life of careful control. When the queen requests her presence at the palace, Ashley must rely on an old friend and new allies, or she'll be squashed within a week. Like literally squashed. But can she trust anyone? The story of seeing betrayal, ruthless competition, and slow burn romance will hook you from the first episode. And it does, because you never think of, well, what if they turned into something else? And like this, in the kingdom that she's in, there's fleas and there's ants and there's other other insects. And I can't help thinking, oh my God, I never thought about it that way before. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get some variety of 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 things. Yeah, that's what was that titled again? That's the Kingdom of Le- Links, and that's by Sarah Shipley. 
And it's one that's definitely appropriate for all ages. It's a wonderful coming of age story. And it's, and again, it's one of those situations where you've got an author to make a coming of age story without approaching crazy tropes that we face with adult reading. So it's, it's fantastic. Oh yeah. That sounds good. That sounds good. Is that, your last, is that your last one? This is my last one on my list for today. I have like, I have an extended list, like, which was like your top 10 or so is like, but I have a top 50. Can, can we talk for like four hours? I can give you a top 50. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, 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 it was hard to um, just come up with a few. We'll do this again next month and okay. come up with, um, with uh, some more favorite yeah. books. I have a this bunch that in my... Vela. Yeah, I have a bunch of novellas and a bunch of regular books and audio books that I'll be listening yeah. to in the next few weeks. So, awesome. um, yeah, we'll definitely do this again. And, and like I said, we will have all the links to everything in the show notes. And you also have a review site that you may yes. want to pitch. At kittyjulik.com. That's my, that's my author website. So there was some drama. Hopefully it's all resolved, but I'm getting back into the swing of things with, with reviewing. Um, we're actually doing a read with me and the Kindle Vella book club group on Facebook. And we're currently reading What Bad Men Do by Halston Hughes. And then I'll be posting a review for hopefully this Friday, if everything goes well. And then, so that's Friday the 8th, right? What's the 8th? No, Friday the 7th. That's Friday the tomorrow. 7th, yes, tomorrow. I have a lot of work to do tonight. I'm almost done with it. Um, and then we'll we'll announce tomorrow in, in the group what we'll be doing is the next read with me. I had plans to do for a specific Vela, but the authors asked for me to wait until they're able to be participative in the group, which I think is awesome because you have a chance to read and then pick the author's brain. Yeah. So once the um, once it gets to the book club portion, mm -hmm. then will you post then um, questions or how, how will you handle that part? So I'm hoping to get more more participation because everyone's like, yeah, let's try this new format because we ran into some, some shenanigans. Um, and with that, we were trying a new, I'm going to host and I'm reading through, I'm going to try to make it more formal. And it's, it's an iterative process where we're just trying to get pe more people engaged. Um, but each of my reviews does come with an interview with the author. Um, and for those out there who are authors, I'm going to tell you that if anybody ever asks you for an interview, whether it's written or it's a podcast, make sure that what you're saying is something you would be okay with a future potential editor or agent tracking down because when they when they start looking at you as a potential client they're going to scrub the internet and if you give some crazy inappropriate answer to an interview question it will come back so luckily when i've had that i've had that happen a couple of times i've actually gone back to the the writer and been like hey yo if you ever get representation and they find this that may not be a good thing Maybe there's a better way to say this. So there's just something to think about for authors and also for readers. So when you talk to your when you talk to an author, you reach out. Authors love it. We love talking to readers. Um, just make sure it's within the confines of appropriateness because people not being cool can lead to authors not being willing to talk to readers. So yeah. it's just random bits and pieces and P's and Q's. But I love I love reviewing, so I'm a develop, developmental editor by trade. I review and I write, um, so this has definitely been an exciting process. And I will tell you, I don't believe in giving a bad review. So if I have a situation where something doesn't meet quality, I will actually send a feedback letter. And they're not like, "Hey, this just wasn't good enough." It's literally a full developmental feedback review of what I've read to that point. So I'll tell you, is it is it grammar? Is it punctuation? Is it styling? Did you? drop out of tenses did you switch the perspective without giving your reader a warning or did you have a sardoodledom where you put them in unrealistic ex unrealistic situations and they did not have a realistic response to it or are you putting them in situations and they're not giving a realistic response i'm going to actually give that feedback so if you ever are a writer and you're like hey will you do a review and i'm like no there's actually a reason I promise I want, I don't want to get any, ever have anybody's first chance to get their voice heard as an author or even their second or third when they're getting started to have that hassling negative follow them. So you'll notice that all of my reviews are positive and then I'm always like, I'm hooked, read, spend your tokens, read more. But that's because that, that I'm never going to review something I wouldn't recommend to somebody else. Well, we've been talking a long time, so we should probably wrap this up. Um, we will do this again. Got it. Uh, I would love to. Thanks so much for coming on. And everybody, all the links will be in the show notes. And that is it. And I'm going to be back in a sec to wrap this up. <laughs>
Thank you so much, Kitty, for being on and for putting up with me laughing about your video mishaps. They were funny and you were a great sport about it. And this was so much fun. Did I just say that? I think I did. But it truly was. I love talking about books and I hope you all enjoyed hearing about them. Go down to the show notes, check out some of those books that we talked about. There are some great ones and I know you'll find something that you'll like. If you want to comment, just go down to the show notes, click on that word comment. Let me know what you think. Uh, recommend a book. I always need new books and I read just about any format and just about any genre. And I know I say I don't like romance that much, but whenever somebody recommends one, I usually like it. So just go ahead, go down there, make a comment. Don't forget to follow us here on the show. And uh, that's it. And uh, I'm going to have Kitty back again because that was so much fun. But in the meantime, go out and read or write a good book.